Hi, and welcome to Homo Ludens, a channel on history and board games. In today's video, we're going to do something a bit special. We're going to talk about statistics. The purpose for this video is actually a thread on Board Game Geek that was started by David Doctor. David Doctor is the designer of Triumph of Chaos, which is the ultimate uh, war game on the Russian Civil War and a CDG. His thread was about the popularity of card-driven war games uh, in the industry since their appearance uh, in the 90s. And actually their appearance in the 90s is something that we can discuss uh, if it's the 90s or even earlier than that. And I thought that this uh, topic was uh, super interesting. Traditionally on Board Game Geek, people argue a lot about uh, taxonomy of war games. And there are a lot of debates on card-driven games uh, about their definition, about their popularity, and about a lot of uh, different things. But what I really liked about David Doctor's approach was the fact that he was using data to answer some of those questions. And I thought that's super interesting because I have a background in statistics, data is my daily work, and I thought maybe I could do something about it. Maybe I could aggregate a lot of information from Board Game Geek and starting doing an analysis and answer some questions that usually are opinion on uh, forums and actually go and look into the facts and provide some insights uh, on what I could find. I looked into the Board Game Geek API, I looked into how other data I could get from maybe web scrapping and started aggregating uh, everything. And what I did is build a database of 5,000 war games based on the top 5,000 war games that are listed on Board Game Geek and started aggregating different pieces of information, putting it all together on a uh, title level and starting doing an analysis. So obviously there is a caveat here. Uh, the caveat is that uh, board game geek data or user generated content. So you might disagree on what is qualified as a war game because it's qualified as a war game because it's defined so by a user. So for example, if you look into Root, uh, Root is considered a, a war game and actually it's considered a card driven war game and you could yeah, argue endlessly, is it a war game or not? Same thing for Twilight Struggle, all, all that things. But I thought, yeah, okay, that's a bias that I can work with. Um, and I still think that it's interesting to look into this because overall, uh, I think that the user generated information are pretty qualitative. And when you do an overall statistical analysis on 5,000 uh, observation, it's, it's actually pretty solid. Uh, but let's look at uh, what the data looks like so you have a better understanding. So here you see it's uh, my R session. Uh, so I'm using R to do some statistical analysis. And what you can see is the database here. So you see the war game rank. Uh, so how popular is the, the game into, uh, in, the, in, the, in the war game section, the title. So the first one is Twilight Struggle. Uh, the geek rating, uh, which uh, is a specific kind of average uh, that is made uh, on board game geek sites and here is the average rating so the average rating is so from 1 to 10 uh, the the rank uh, that those 34000 people actually gave uh, to that title then for technical purposes i have a uh, structure of the uh, url i have the id uh, is it an expansion or not is it card driven this one is is was it crowdfunded? What's the average playing time? Is it a hex encounter? Is it complex? Uh, how many people voted for complexity? How many owners for that game? And how many people are wishing that game? Uh, and this is for additional analysis that I made uh, on this data set about different parameters like mechanics, uh, how, how much people wish different things and all this. Um, and I'm going to create a Board Game Geek thread about this analysis. So if you want to have more information about what I found out based on this, uh, please go there. And I'm mostly going to focus on key insights that I gather around uh, card driven games today. And all the rest will be available on the Board Game Geek thread, uh, such as also the script that I use to extract the data. So if you want to also do your own analysis or maybe use the same data set as I did to do other analysis, please feel free to do so. So the first thing that I looked into was the trend of war game production from the beginning of the 50s to today in 2018. I stopped in 2018 because uh, the data was not as reliable after that and actually you could even argue that 2018 data is probably not complete uh, but in any case looking at the trend of war game production is actually quite interesting uh, so you should have an animated graph now in front of you showing how 
uh, the data evolves over time and you see that there are three big moments uh, in the war game industry. The first one is a spike uh, at the end of the 70s and beginning of the 80s where you have this first plateau uh, where you have a lot of uh, war games being produced. The second one appears in the 90s, you have this second plateau and then you have a spike uh, in around 2010 which actually is pretty much correlated with what you would see for the overall board game production with this new renaissance of board games. And I think that's interesting to see that uh, there were two big eras uh, in the war game industry. Now that we have this reference of the production of war game, I wanted to look into specifically out of all those war games that were produced, how many of them were CDGs. And I did the same trend analysis, but divided um, war games depending on the fact that they contained a card-driven mechanic or they didn't contain a card-driven mechanic. So you have more or less the same graph now. And what you can see is that there are a few um, card-driven war games that existed before Washington's War or Pass of Glory, but uh, there is clearly a huge increase uh, of those kind of games uh, after the year 2000. And that's interesting because it's, I think, more correlated to um, uh, games that you would argue are not necessarily completely war games such as uh, Twilight Struggle or Labyrinth rather than uh, big heavy hitter success in the, Grognar, uh, in the Grognard's circles such as uh, Path of Glory. Now that we have this, so the actual numbers of uh, war games and the number of CDGs that are uh, into those war games, I thought it could be interesting to look into the proportion. So you have we have a bit this idea of uh, of all the war games that are being produced, what's the actual proportion of them? So it's basically the same graphic, uh, and what you see is that before we the people, you actually don't really uh, have a significant proportion of war games that are being produced uh, using uh, uh, using cards. Uh, but it slowly progressed over time, uh, and in the early 2000s, uh, Twilight Struggle is actually giving momentum, and the spike actually is happening in 2010. So to the first question, are uh, card-driven war games still popular? I would say that, that probably not. Uh, they were very big in 2010, but I think it also um, uh, breaks this idea that uh, CDGs were really big uh, end of the 90s following Pass of Glory, and actually they are they reached their, their peak uh, when they went a bit away from core uh, war game mechanics. So that's uh, the first thing. Then I read a lot of questions regarding the cult of the new uh, and I was wondering what impacts um, the rating of those games and I looked at the distribution of the top 100 war game, uh, top 1000 war game and, and top 5000 war game depending on the year they were released and looked uh, at CDGs versus non-CDGs and when you look at the evolution of this distribution you see that Overall, there is not that much a cult of the new uh, in the war game industry, not as much as you would see in other board games. There is a bit of a cult of the new, but there is also a cult of the 90s, uh, which is super interesting. Like the 90s were a big era for uh, qualitative uh, war games, you could say, and they are very much represented in the top 100 war games. For uh, CDGs, you see two specific bumps of uh, qualitative um, CDGs, and one is in the uh, early 2000 and the other is in the late 2000. So it's interesting to see that probably the popularity of great CDGs is fading away, but we still have like some core uh, card-driven war games uh, on around those eras. I also did a linear model to look into the rating to see what different parameters were important uh, to define if a war game was popular or not. So looking at the rating as the thing that I was trying to predict and looking at a lot of different variables. Um, and one of them was the year to actually prove the cult of the new. And yes, we can see that the more modern a war game is, the more chance it has to have a higher ranking. But it's not the only factor and maybe not the biggest one. And looking into the data, you see that one of the most important factors for the popularity of a war game is its complexity. Uh, weirdly enough, the more a war game is complex, the higher rated it's going to get. But it's not going to get that much owners. And actually, it's not because a game is highly ranked that it will get a lot of owners. On the Board Game Geek thread, I will share with you uh, this infographic where you actually have this uh, linear regression that uh, puts in comparison the complexity with the average rating. And you can see non-CDGs against CTGs. You see that it follows more or less the same line. Uh, and I will pinpoint to some specific uh, big uh, card-driven games over there. 
now that we know that complexity is a factor for the success of a war game and also for the success of a card driven uh, war game let's look at uh, how the average weight of uh, war games and cdgs in particular evolve over time so i started with a graphic that shows the evolution of distribution by half decade and what we can see is that in the beginning uh, cdgs were mostly lighter than other war games uh, with most games between uh, 0.2 or 0.3 uh, level of uh, complexity which is interesting and shows that the assumption that uh, card driven war games or uh, lighter than regular war games is true but looking more closely at it we see that over time the distribution of complexity starts to spread and we can clearly observe that some games took the path of being more heavy uh, while some design kept it simple and you have a clear examples of that uh, if you look at the uh, war game production of cdgs on one hand you have julius caesar from columbia game which is a cdg but very accessible and very simple and on the other one you have one that's here empire of the sun by gmt games that is one of the at least for me one of the of the most complex war game that i know of and both of them are cdgs and finally uh, one last thing that i uh, wanted to analyze was uh, the hotness of uh, different war games looking at the number of people who added this game in their wishlist compared to the number of owners of uh, that game uh, and putting it in perspective with the rating of the game uh, and the amount of people that owned it. Uh, I created something that I called the hotness factor and just for fun I looked at the top 5 hottest uh, core driven war games that are on the market uh, today and here are the results. Uh, number one is Free at Last by Jolly Roger Games. Um, personally, I've never heard about it. Apparently, it's on the civil uh, rights movement. Number two is Root by Letter Games. That was a super successful Kickstarter campaign and had just a really uh, successful second Kickstarter campaign for their next expansion. Uh, number three is uh, Wars of Marcus Aurelius by Hollenspiel. It's a solo game that looks indeed very interesting, but I think that most of the hotness of this game is also due to the shitty distribution of Hollenspiel uh, to countries outside of the US. Then we've got Democracy Under Siege by Cuatro Dados, uh, Second World War Sandbox. Never heard about it either, but it looks actually quite fun and I started looking into it uh, after doing this score. And the fifth game is a game that I already mentioned earlier in this video, Triumph of Chaos, uh, the second uh, edition, so the deluxe edition. And I think that's what happened when you hype a new version for years. Some people get excited about it. Personally, I'm receiving it next week. So I was part of those hyped uh, people for this game. To conclude, I would uh, like to go through uh, three main takeaways uh, of uh, this analysis. The first one is that uh, the war game production is on a, has been on a downward train for uh, the last five years, which is something that I've never noticed before, before looking at this data. Uh, and on this, I have no explanation and it would be interesting to have the inputs of um, board game publishers. The second insight is that um, CDGs are only marginally less complex than other war games uh, and we see that this complexity has spreaded across the, the last decade. The third insight is uh, CDGs are overall highly regarded, but they did have a golden era uh, between 2010 and 2015. And that's it for now. That concludes uh, this video that is a bit of a note format that is super nerdy. So for the beginners here, I'm really sorry. I will probably do a video just explaining what are card driven war games and their history in the future. Uh, for the grognards, I hope that you uh, enjoyed that analysis. Uh, if you did, please uh, like, share, subscribe, and also so add some um, comments uh, in the comment section obviously uh, I'm considering actually doing more of those kind of analysis so let me know if you have any idea for any subjects and I invite you to go to do a BGG thread uh, where I will detail a bit more about this analysis uh, to continue the discussion also over there thank you for watching see you next time it was homo Ludens.